and thank you for watching our first um, careers interview video that we've created. Um, it's Helsham Community College in partnership with um, East Sussex Careers Hub. And we're delighted today to invite uh, to welcome, sorry, some guests from Cheesema Building Contractors. So we've got Steve, Dan and Jen. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving your time this morning. So um, this idea came about because we were very aware that um, year 10s across the county were unfortunately having to miss work experience this year due to the situation. And we thought that it would be a good idea to um, try and link up with some particular sectors of local companies in East Sussex and find out some information about their career paths. Um, and about jobs in their sectors. And you guys, um, thank you so much for offering your time this morning to answer some questions. Um, I set a task to our year 10s at Helsham Community College to watch the Go Construct video about a whole variety of careers in the construction industry and then send a question in. So we've picked um, seven of those questions this morning um, to ask you if uh, you're happy to answer them. And so we'll get started with question number one, which is, when were, you, uh, when were you first introduced to a career in construction and did it change your mind if you had another career path in mind? Um, well, I'm going to go first on that one. I, When I left school after my A-levels, which I didn't do that well at, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I, by chance, as a result of my mum actually putting me in that direction, I went to work to train as a quantity surveyor at one of the government offices, dealt with the government properties. Um, I won't bore you with all the details, but after doing some studying, dropping out, going to do jobs in other sectors and other industries, I finally came back to construction and got myself qualified. Um, so it was a long and tortuous route. I didn't go down the usual route, but um, I always joke that I, I still don't know what I want to do yet, but I'm having a really good time doing what I'm doing and it's it's a great industry to work in. So uh, over to you, Jen. Sorry, um, unless you've got a question, Jen. Um, I was just sorry, I just thought before we continue much further, I didn't actually ask you to state what your current role is when you're oh, talking sorry. about this yeah, question. I'm, <laughs> I'm Steve, I'm uh, a, a Joint Managing Director and Co-Owner of Cheeseman Building Contractors. And also we have another smaller business called Access Mobility um, in Burgess Hill in, in West Sussex. So. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I so I work in the accounts department. So I first started working in construction um, when I decided to uh, get my accounts qualifications. And I was looking for a, just um, an assistant role to get some experience. Um, so I started working for a, a small local construction firm near <clears throat> near where I lived, and I basically worked in construction accounts ever since. Um, so I wasn't specifically looking for a construction role really, but I think it's it's given me a really good, a better understanding of of accounts and um, business in general, rather than uh, that I think I would have in another industry. Okay, thank you, Jen. Um, and I, I'm Dan. I'm one of the estimators at Gizmo Building Contractors, um, and I had a whole other different career path in mind when I was when I just left school and I did pursue that um, the nature of it was as it was self-employed meant it was quite hard to get a mortgage and it was a uh, little bit complicated um, and then a job in construction kind of became an opportunity so I was quite lucky in that respect and I thought well if I do this for a bit maybe I'll get the mortgage out of it and turns out I really enjoyed it and that was six years ago now so I'm, I'm still going <laughs> And still training, I think, aren't you? So. Yeah, so I um, so I joined with no no experience at all. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I'm I'm at the end of a degree, so I did an HNC, HND, and I'm about eight weeks of finishing a, a degree as well. Um, so that was all alongside it. But I think yeah, I think we're going to talk about that as, as well a bit later on. Yeah. So question um, two is not necessarily specifically to your. Uh, your experience, but a more general question about how do you get into the construction industry? Um, well, if I can talk in general terms, there's all sorts of routes. So uh, 16 years old, you can do an apprenticeship and it doesn't have to be a construction trade. You can do an apprenticeship in, in various things um, like to try start training to be a site manager, 
doing construction technology. Um, I think you can do some accounting stuff as well on the apprenticeship, but certainly um, there are new government apprenticeships now where you can do degrees and professional qualifications as part of the government apprenticeship scheme, which is, can be grant funded. So that's quite useful. Um, yeah, and there are, yeah, there's the working, working and training. Um, as I say, apprenticeships, degrees, um, HNC, HND, which, which Dan did before he started his degree. Um, and then beyond that, you get into the professional qualifications if you're going to work on the technical side. So um, architects, surveyors, um, engineers, um, the people that design all the heating and ventilating, electrical, all that sort of stuff. There's professional bodies where you get a professional qualification and you get some nice letters after your name, which is always nice. <laughs> so really, at each, at each point in education, there is a route into construction. Yeah, yeah. And it's and you don't have to, you know, if you think I want to do something else, as Dan, Dan said, he's got he's already got a degree in a completely unrelated um, profession. Um, but that didn't stop him with the skills he learned from that <coughs> to bring it bring it to his the job he does he does now. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Jen, did you want to, anything to um, add? Yeah, just following what from you said, there's there's lots of there's so many different roles in construction and, and you know, any skill I think is transferable. So even if you just kind of come in it as a an assistant or a junior somewhere along the line and, and build up from there. You can decide if you want to do qualifications after having some experience. Sorry, Jen, can I just jump in? As an example of that, what what are you doing for Cheesemuir at the moment? Talking about transferable skills. <laughs> I was stepping in to cover in the um, buying department for a few weeks to cover some, some sick leave and paternity, so it's <laughs> You learn, you learn all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Another new, new string to your bow. <laughs> yeah. Just, well, just to add a, a little bit, coming at it from a slightly different angle. So, yes, there are lots of really good apprenticeship schemes, but you don't have to go down that route. So, practically, once you finish your GCSEs, you could, for your A levels, you could do HNCs and HNDs, say, uh, or or college is it still called college <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, for a couple of years and then you could do you could go on and do the sort of traditional university route where you're doing a full-time say quantity surveying degree or commercial property management degree um, so you'd still be going down the same sort of uh, educational path as a lot of other professions um, <clears throat> in that respect so you're still getting the university experience and then when you finish that you're then fully equipped with your HNC, HND and degree to go in at a sort of maybe trainee level, maybe qualified level um, as as a quantity surveyor, as an estimator, as a maybe as a site manager or contracts manager. So it doesn't have to doesn't have to be an apprenticeship. You 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 mm -hmm. can sort of go around that way as well if you're more if that's you know if that's the, the sort of <coughs> lifestyle and if you're more inclined to go through the university route that way. Um, yeah, I think sorry, that just Sorry, Sorry Dan, well, Dan's degree is just about to finish. He's been doing whilst he's been working. So he works four days and has a day off for study. Yeah, you can do it that way. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, because there's degree apprenticeship routes as well as um, all levels of apprenticeship, plus, like you say, the traditional university degree routes as well. So I think that's really highlighted sort of the, the vast um, array of different pathways yeah. that you can take, whether it is straight from school at 16 or post 18 or post degree. So lots and lots of opportunities at a variety of levels. So mm. that's great. Thank you. And um, so our next question is what skills are important if you want to work in construction? Oh, blimey. So that is a big question. Yeah. Very big question. Um, there is a huge range, as, 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 as Jen said, you know, she's in the accounts department, she's covering for people in the buying department, Dan's in the estimating team where they price all the work. Generally, in the industry, you need to be committed to it, um, particularly if you're going to be working on site because our sites start work at 7.30 in the morning, so you've got to be up and out early in all weathers, um, all times of the year. Um, but the skills are the usual things. You've got to be able to get on with people. 
you, you know, you've, you've got your, your maths, your English, your communication skills. Um, if you're on a site and you don't get on with anybody, it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be really difficult for you to, to keep your to keep your job or keep your motivation to go go to that job. Um, eager to learn, committed to learning. Always remember that you never know everything. I'm still learning new stuff every day. I find out stuff every day and I go, really? You know, so always be ready, ready to learn. Um, but if it, if you're committed to it and you're enjoying it, most of those other things flow flow naturally. But you do have to have to study. And I mentioned earlier about my career path. I didn't get qualified as a chartered builder till I was 42 years old, and I didn't I didn't get my chartered surveying qualification until I was a few years after until a few years after that. But and that was hard work. Um, and it might not feel like it when you're in year 10. But it's a lot easier and you've got a lot more time when you're at school. <laughs> Trust <Yeah>. me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Jen, have you got any? Um, no, I think Steve has taken this one, but I can, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we... so Steve, really, it's, um, you know, there's a, any kind of skill can relate to all the roles within construction yeah. and, and it's and if you are you know if you're good at maths there's certain roles if you're good at english there's certain roles mm -hmm. if you're good with your with your hands there's the the trade roles and there's still an opportunity to cross over mm -hmm. so we've got um site managers and contracts managers who started out doing trade apprenticeships like carpenters or bricklayers for example and then they've they've become supervisors and managers and site managers and they've worked their way through the through the various um, levels of the team, and now they're working at, at senior senior levels. So there's all those all those opportunities. And I would just say as well, yeah, I, I'm co-owner of a, a building company. Mm. I'd be useless with a piece of wood or, yeah. or trying to lay bricks. I wouldn't have a clue what I was doing. Mm. But I've got really good people that do know what they're doing. That's really good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think skills is something that we try to focus on at school because often in, when employers meet our students, they say that um, the students don't understand the skills that they already have, like from the things that they already do. So um, it's helping them understand what, what those skills are and where they'd be relevant in the workplace as well. well could um, I just jump in there then, Jenny? Yeah, That's a valid point because what I try and stress in my role as an enterprise advisor as well when I speak to the students is you know the things you do outside of school mm. can feed into it if you've got a part-time job or or you volunteer or you're part of a football team or a rugby team or anything like that you know that you know if you're in a rugby team or a football team for example or a netball team or a hockey team you're learning to work with other people to achieve to achieve a goal and that's very important in most jobs whether it's construction or anything else you've got mm -hmm. to be able to work with other people um, to, to to reach that target that you're all trying to achieve yeah that's really important and just really uh, good for our like I say the students to really understand how they can tease out all those extra skills that they gain from things that they do outside of um, school it's not necessarily just everything in the classroom that builds mm -hmm. them as a person with all those skills it's everything that they do outside of that as well so Thank you for that. Um, so our next question, I'm really glad to have Jen here as well, is um, are there many females working in construction? Yeah, not not at the moment. Uh, there's only about 14% of um, females make up workers in construction and a large, a large portion of those are in administrative roles within the offices. And um, they, you know, we are seeing an increase in number of uh, women qualifying as um, choosing careers in architecture and uh, quantity surveying and um, not so much on site at the moment but I know the industry is trying really hard to encourage more more women to find careers in construction and there's you know there's plenty plenty of options and opportunities Lovely. it's just more a stereotypically male environment and you know it isn't that way at all really but yeah I think sometimes it can come across like that and it's certainly work we do at school in kind of breaking down those gender stereotypes in all sorts of jobs not just construction yeah. um 
but yeah it's really I think it's a really valuable sector to work in for Definitely, both yeah. male and female and and the opportunities and the training available are fantastic. Mm -hmm. could, I, could I just add to that as well we have noticed that as the older members of the construction community me included are getting towards the end of their careers as the younger generations mm -hmm. come through it is getting better mm -hmm. so the percentage of people like my age and 20 years younger than me even mm -hmm. there's not that many females but the percentage increases as the younger generations come through there's there's more more more, more going into the industry which is a great thing yeah. and we have had you know i've worked with we've had um apprentice a carpenter a, actually two carpenters and a painter at various times female apprentices and they've gone on to do to do really really well it may maybe I mean, one of them in particular decided not to pursue construction but going back to transferable skills she's doing very well in her chosen path as a result of things she learned while she was doing that that carpentry work okay that's great Thank you. Um, so our next question is something that always comes up with students. Um, I think it's a, it's a key interest of theirs when they're thinking about future careers and it's about salary. Um, so the question was, what are the typical salary scales for some of the main jobs in construction? OK, you can go from um, the minimum wage and slightly less if you're a young apprentice when you first start. But it's worth if you put the hours and put the time in. Um, tradespeople now are anything between thirty, sorry, thirteen and thirty pounds an hour, mm. and more for real high tech trades. Um, site managers start at I don't know. Well, training site managers are probably twenty-five to thirty grand a year. Um, and that's just in this area. Um, and then you'll go up, you know, you get quantities, contracts managers, 60, 70, 80,000, depending on what you do and where you're doing it. And if you go up to London, I mean, you get company directors on six figure salaries. Um, and in London, you can get some contracts managers and surveyors on six figure salaries. Mm. Um, but it's based on what, what your skills are, what your experience is. And um, it's also based on how much stress you're prepared to put up with. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, you know, I, I, I well, perhaps not now, I'm a bit older, but I could have gone to London every day and earned a significant amount more. But there's that stress of commuting to and from London every day, mm -hmm. uh, and working long hours and that, you know, you have to balance your life work, um, your life work balance in place. Um, Jen, do you, you want anything to add on that? Um, not sure what I can add to that. That's the reason. That's right. Well, I, 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 I could add, I could add a little bit, which is yeah. uh, just to kind of echo what Dad said. Your salary scale is in this industry, particularly, is reflective of how much work you put in. Mm. So it's you. There's a, there's nowhere to hide in this industry. If you aren't working hard reflective of what your salary is and showing some enthusiasm you will get found out and you won't get a nice big salary whereas if you are willing to put the hours in and put the effort in you can uh, you can do very well indeed um, I'm not saying that in other sectors and careers that isn't the case but I would I think particularly in construction if if you're the shirker everybody knows you're the one shirking <laughs> shirking the work it it doesn't take long for it to be found out so yeah you can earn a fortune if you're going to work hard and if you want to do very little you're not going to earn very much <laughs> which sounds obvious when you say it out loud but i think it's i think it's true and worth remembering i don't know yeah. if you'd agree with that Stephen, jen um well yeah. i yeah well i would say as well work hard but also work smart Mm. So think about think about it. Try and be one of the issues we have with a lot of apprentices is they don't think ahead. Mm. They're, they're not being proactive um, and going back to what you can achieve. So Jen's line manager is our finance director. So one of the directors in the business. Is an accountant. Mm. So you follow, you know, he's got a completely different career path, mm. but he's, he's now a director of a construction company. 
So I think from what you've been saying, it sounds to me that if you're really putting in that effort and commitment, you can kind of you can build your reputation within that sector. And whether that becomes locally in your area or further afield, that actually you could become the person that the go to person in some aspects that that people go to um, for that for that kind of job. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you're a spe and if you're a specialist in your field, you can you know you you have the ability to earn more money than somebody in a more regular role if that makes sense yeah yeah okay. lovely thank you very much um so question six is how hard is it to manage the apprenticeship college work alongside working i think jen and dan could answer this one yeah i mean obviously i haven't done an apprenticeship myself but i have always studied uh for my accounts qualifications alongside working full time and um, obviously you have to really be strict to yourself and motivate <laughs> sorry <laughs> my cat <laughs> motivate um motivate yourself to do the work out you know outside of being at work as well but it really helps i think uh, with your learning um, and understanding when you're then putting in what you've learned in your course into your workplace um on a day in your day to day role <clears throat> I don't know, how have you found it, Dan? Yeah, so I, so I did similarly to Jen. I was working full time through the HNC and HND, where I was out for a day and a half a week. And for the degree, I'm out for one day a week. And if you treat that day a week as any other day, you're up early, you attend the lectures or seminars or whatever it happens to be, and do the work, then it's it's no different to being being at work five days a week so it's it's absolutely fine um or if you're you know if you don't put in quite so much on that one day then you're going to lose maybe one two evenings every every month and the odd saturday so it's it's a negligible amount of time um i would say it's very easy to manage it if you stay on top of it if you're the sort of person who puts things off till the last minute then it's going to be a little bit more stressful um but definitely i wouldn't let it put you off if you if that was a concern I would say it's an unfounded concern and it's more than manageable as long as you keep on top of it. Okay and if you I guess if you felt you weren't the type of person that could balance that then maybe it would be looking at an alternative route but it's certainly manageable. Yeah and I imagine in an apprenticeship as well you get a lot of support from the college or university that you're with yeah and 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 your employer as well if, if you keep an open dialogue with your employer so occasionally when i've had so when i've had a busy you know if, if work's been busy and the university deadlines are all clumped together and for whatever other reason I, i'm running out of time because i work hard and the company knows i work hard there's a nice open dialogue and i can say that i need a bit of extra time with this is there any chance of this wednesday i could just have the afternoon to catch up sort of thing and mm. it's never been a problem and i'm sure i'm sure if you're in because it's your employers in your employer's interest for you to get these qualifications as well so as long mm. as you're honest with them if you're doing an, an apprenticeship and you need a bit more time they're going to let you have that time if you've been putting the effort in and you're open and honest with them so it's definitely manageable yeah definitely and we i think we were saying uh, we had a brief conversation before but about that flexibility then also helps your employer because when you're then on holidays from universities and college you can work full time for them exactly. in those periods so that it sort of works for both ways and with um, everybody on like you say keeping that conversation open you can be well supported and it can support your employer as well um, yeah. a lot a lot of the trades apprenticeships now as well a lot of the work and a lot of the assessment is based on what you're doing during the working time so you're taking photos writing little reports about what you've done getting your line managers to sign off that you've done it. So there is a lot of work based learning as well, which counts towards your qualifications, which does help. Yep, lovely. Thank you. Right. So we're on to our final question, which is sort of obviously very relevant for um, in maybe our students minds as well. But um, what effect do you think the COVID-19 pandemic will have on um, the construction industry and future jobs? Um, well, I get to answer this one. Um, the short to medium term effect is it's going to slow things down. 
Um, it, we know it's going to have an effect on the economy, but that's not just construction. And as a result of the impact on the economy, the level of construction activity will reduce a bit. Um, but I don't expect it to be as bad as some people are forecasting. Um, in the longer term, we have learnt, because we've had to learn, to do things in a different way, which has made us more efficient at some things, which is very good. We've already had a shortage of skilled professionals and skilled labour in the industry anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so there are still great opportunities for people coming into the industry. Depending link to that with what happens with the Brexit negotiations, we've got a lot of European work in our workforce in the UK. If a lot of them aren't happy with the arrangements and choose to leave, that will leave an even bigger hole. So even if there is a recession, I don't think the um, I don't think there will be a problem to get a job in the construction industry. Coming back to Dan's comment, if you're good at what you do and you're sought after, there will always be a job for you. Okay. Always be, be a job. We, we've been looking for some key personnel over the last what, 12 months, 18 months, and we've really struggled to find some good key um, contracts managers and quantity surveyors, for example, because there, there's, there's too much work and not enough people to do it. And I can't see that. I can see that getting a bit less stretched, but I still think they'll need good people. And we live in houses, we work in buildings that, you know, to some extent we need hospitals, we need schools, we need universities. There will always be a construction industry. Mm -hmm. right. Thanks. Has okay. anyone else got anything that they wanted to add to that or? Um, no, I just agree with Steve. There's, there's always going to be jobs in construction. I think it's just about it's made us change the way we do things. Um, but I don't think it will, in the long run, uh, damage demand for the jobs in construction. Lovely. Well, thank you all so much for giving your time. Um, I was really pleased to have got quite a good response from year 10 with questions and uh, we didn't have time to put them all into the video and I know Steve that you've kindly offered to answer some of those via email for me so that I can circulate them with our students. Um, so if you haven't seen your question answered here today year 10 it um, is likely coming to you um, on an attachment uh, from Steve. I want to thank you all very much again for giving your time this morning. It's been really useful and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with our students and I think um, the Careers Hub are looking to share it with Year 10s across the county as well uh, to help to support them um, thinking about their future careers at this time when they're obviously at home uh, on lockdown and using <laughs> this time to hopefully think about their next steps um, think about other ways that they might be able to do work experience or gain information from employers um, while they aren't able to actually get out there and physically kind of do the job. So um, really, really appreciate it and uh, thank you very much. Thanks,